إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome to the Young Smirks podcast. I have Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. The marriage guru. Uh, that's what you call me. <laughs> let me practice my new calling in my da'wah, inshallah. Inshallah, huh? inshallah. inshallah. Sheikh, subhanAllah, a few years ago, it's great to have you back, by the way. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The last show, yeah. mashallah, everyone's commenting and happy to hear your story. And, Alhamdulillah. you know, people are getting a lot of benefit as well. Yeah, I think um, these stories, we don't realize that how actually beneficial they are. People really yeah. benefit and like to listen to them yeah. as well, alhamdulillah. I just had a message. Um, there was a sister um, commenting, actually. I'm already married, bro. Just, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, you know, it, I was going to let you know if she has a sister. Like, you know. <laughs> no, she was um, basically, she just uh, converted to Islam not long ago. Mashallah. And she was just expressing that she got some benefit from your, you know, hearing. Oh, yeah, con- yeah. And also seeing converts who have actually studied and become a sheikh, you know, yeah, know, you know, actually spent time learning the religion. So it's encouraging. I remember when I first came to Islam, I thought, I'm never going to know how to recite Fatiha. Yeah, so I'm never going to be able to pray, you know, because it's just so foreign and new. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when, when we see converts who, you know, you know, who have, who have took it seriously, it really helps us. Yeah, so, Sheikh, a few years ago, maybe six years ago. Was it that long? Maybe, yeah. Allah Akbar. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. I think it was like, two, was it 2014, yeah, maybe? It I was, think yeah. so. It was six years ago, we, yeah, because my, uh, yeah, it was six years ago. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, seven, 2014. At exactly. least five. No, it was um, two, I believe it was 2014. Yeah, we did a, a series on Peace TV mm-hmm. about family, and I got so much benefit, mashallah. I, yeah, you remember I was taking notes. You know, yeah, I remember, mashallah. Yeah. And I, I actually lost my notes because uh, when I moved from Kuwait uh, to the UK, somewhere in the container, you know, I've, I've it's somewhere in my storage, yes, but I really wanted to view it, but I don't think it's even been released. I'm not sure. I, I talked to Dr. Zakir about that program and some other programs that I want to get mm. uh, benefit from uh, my, from my other, my old programs, even some of the programs of some other brothers. And he told me that, alhamdulillah, you know, he said that the one thing that they're able to say, because unfortunately the Indian government, they and he confiscated all of their, their filming equipment, all of their stuff from their studio, but they were able to save all of the things that they had filmed. But you can imagine the, you know, the thousands and thousands of hours, and maybe a lot of it's not labeled, for example. So yeah. he said it's like re- literally trying to find a needle in a haystack. So, they had 100 or 200 plus employees. Now they have two employees. Yeah. So he said it's, it's not something we can just easily go yeah. get in the, and then send to you like we used to be able to. So, but, I mean, so it is saved, but unfortunately, I, I think it wasn't broadcasted, unfortunately. Yeah. That's why I was thinking, you know, next time I see you, we have to do... A series inshallah because i don't want to do just do one podcast ideally i want because i know we got a lot of content mashallah so i'd like to do a series on 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 uh, family inshallah and uh, so yeah i mean what inspired you to kind of do this course was it was there anything behind it i mean i, I think when you look at the the situation of the ummah uh, you see the need for, for things like this uh and this course any I, I made the foundation around you know the foundation itself, from when, when you start from choosing the spouse. And if you remember, when we did the, the podcast, we did actually four episodes just on that. That's how in-depth mm-hmm. we went in, into that issue of choosing the spouse. Yeah. And each episode was 26 minutes, subhanAllah. So you can imagine yeah. how, how in-depth that, that, that series was. Uh, so I started from the foundation, but even we noticed that people had been married for you know, 10, 20 years. They're also benefited from the course as well because they're realizing a lot of the mistakes and a lot of things they should have been doing when they, you know, laid the foundation for the family. Oh, we didn't do that. We didn't do that properly. Yeah. So they're going back and actually fixing things. This is what made it clear from the beginning for those who take this course is that it's not just, you know, yeah. we have an expression in, in Arabic, ma fata mat, yani, mm-hmm. well, what's in the past, it's, it's, it's dead, it's gone. No, you can still, alhamdulillah, you can still rectify and fix things. A lot of yeah. things, inshallah. Uh, you know, the, mm-hmm. like the things you did the night of the marriage, you didn't do, but you can benefit from the concept of those things that need to be done yeah. Uh, you know, or should have been done during that time of following the sunnah and what have you. So it's beneficial for people of, of all stages of marriage, alhamdulillah. I mean, of course, we're not going to be able to go for, through all of it on the podcast, but I know you're in the process, inshallah, of, of actually providing a, a course online. Exactly. So inshallah. what we're going to do, we'll put the link in the description as well, where people can actually sign up, inshallah. you know, so that yeah, when, ready, when your course is available, inshallah. you know, they can be informed, inshallah, inshallah. And, you know, they can get the whole access to all the content. Inshallah. 
So yeah, Bismillah, where do we start, Shaykh? You, you, you say we start from the beginning, choosing the spouse. Yeah, the, the, this is the key thing that we always do. In Islam, actually, mm. if you look into the, to the Sunnah, it focuses on this in detail, of choosing the right spouse. And this is very, very important. A lot of times that people, you know, they, they don't uh, focus on, on the importance of this. Mm. So they focus on one aspect and leave other aspects. Mm. And I remember a story, it was very profound. Um, one of our brothers, I really love this brother, he's a very, very you know, strong, powerful student of knowledge. And there was a sister, she's a practicing sister, she's been very good friends with, with my wife. He came and asked, uh, asked for her hand in marriage, they say, asked her to marry him. And you know, her family, you know, this sheikh, you know, they know him, they know how pious he is. You know, someone who's, you know, we know, uh, you know from being close to him, now, his, his night prayer, his you know, fasting. And he's very, very strong in knowledge, mashallah. So when he came and asked the sister to marry him, and he, the family was ecstatic. Even she herself was very happy, the fact that Sheikh came and asked to marry her. Uh, so it, it was khalas, it was just a done deal as soon as he came to the house. But my wife felt there was something missing, there was something there that you know, she wasn't comfortable to or what have you. And she asked him, she said, hold on, I have to ask you, are you comfortable with him? She was like, yeah, but he's a Sheikh, he's, he's pious, he's famous. He said, yeah, but are you attracted to him? Because don't forget now, this is just, that's the deen, that's one aspect. Yeah. And when you look into all of the hadith, and it's always talked about it's the importance of gathering all of the hadith, is that you see that issue of the looks, it, it's very, and even the Prophet doesn't mention in several, in several hadith. In the hadith where he mentioned the deen itself, yeah. he mentioned as well. And so even in the hadith, he mentioned the four things when he mentioned the issue of, of the deen being the most important. Also the jamal, the beauty, was one of the things he mentioned, yeah. alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is something very important. So are you attractive? She said, no, I don't really like the way the sheikh looks. So this is someone you're going to have to, you're gonna have to mm -hmm. serve and take care of and, and, and you know, be his wife for all of these years. So if you're not attracted to him, don't do it. So she told her mother, she said, really, I'm not interested. I don't like the sheikh, you know. And so mm -hmm. they ended up not getting married. But that's something mm -hmm. important because when you look into the hadith, what did the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, what did he mention? He mentioned four things in the hadith. And, you know, sometimes some of our brothers, they might be a bit, uh, you know, uh, too strict looking for the, for, the, for the wife, or the sisters as well. They say, we have to have all four of these things. Mm. And it might be very difficult, you can find all four of them, you know. But if you can find any, uh, you know, most of them or some of them, and you have to see what, you know, what is more important to you. And some things in different cultures might be more important, you know. For example, the lineage, mm. you know, that might be something that's very, very important yeah. in some cultures. Whereas it may be for us in the West, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah. you have to pay attention to that if you're from certain uh, backgrounds and certain cultures. So the issue, the issue, he mentioned Ali Salatu Wasalam for the issue of the uh, of the religion. He mentioned the, the beauty. He mentioned her money if she's if she's well off, mm. and he mentioned the issue of, uh, of the lineage. Mm. And he said, then focus on the issue of the deen of the religion. This is the the key. This is the key aspect that you need to look for is the deen. Also, and if you look into another hadith, we have to gather up all of the hadith to see that we're looking. What do we, what do we need to focus on? For the sisters, he mentioned the hadith that if a man comes to you, we mentioned talking about to the ones who's the wali the guardian of the women. He said, if someone comes to you asking to marry your daughter, to marry your sister, whoever you're in charge of, whoever it is, and he said, and you're happy with his deen and his khuluq, his religion and his manners. If you're happy with his religion and his manners, he said, then marry him. Otherwise, the corruption will spread throughout the earth. So we have another thing we added to the four, which is the issue of the manners. The deen is mentioned in both hadith. There's other hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he asked the sahabi who came and he wanted to get married, he said, have you seen her? And you mm -hmm. see, subhanAllah, and he, even I know brothers, even some brothers from the West, they, have, they haven't seen their wife until the day of, of, of the marriage, subhanAllah. And I remember one of the, uh, the sheikhs who taught us, he said, well, I said, I didn't see my wife until the day of the marriage, which is mm -hmm. something that's not, not acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can be surprised a lot of the times. And even some, some customs still have that. Even I remember I was sitting with some scholars uh, recently, they visited me and when I was in Ireland from uh, Kuwait. Mm -hmm. And one of them, he's actually, one of the things he does is he's, he's official and he does the official marriage contracts. So he said, we still have from the Bedouins, tribes, like ours, he said that you don't see your wife until you marry her. And they mm. won't even let you talk to her. He said, when I got married to my wife, he said, I called her. And um, her brother was like, you know, Sheikh, uh, with all due respect, you know, our customs that we don't, you know, allow. He said, look, he said, this is my wife, put her on the phone. He said, these customs, leave it aside because it's, 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 mm. it's rubbish. Mm. Now, this is my wife. You can't tell me I can't talk to my wife. We're officially married. Yeah. You know, but their customs, it's, it's like, hey, it's looked mm. down upon for you to talk until the night of the marriage. You because, find this in, in many cultures. Yeah, in many, 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 African, yeah. Arab, and Asian. Yeah. You find all these things. But it has nothing to do with Islam. Right. 
And then, and even I remember when, when, my, when my daughter got married, they tried to get the issue of the custom and stuff. I said, look, I said, don't, don't get me involved in this stuff. I said, for me, I said, right now they're officially married. I said, he can, he can take her, he can take his wife now, come take her to his house if he wants. I don't, you don't have to do, yeah. we, we, did, we had the party after they got married. We had the big celebration. Yeah. All of the, I said it was amazing actually the wedding, the scholars from uh, all around Sudan, all, all of them were there. It was a, it was a huge event. And even the brothers were saying, how did you get all these scholars in one place, mashallah? They were, so they were coming uh, for, 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 for the marriage. So we had, a, you know, we had a small ceremony afterwards. I remember I, I invited some sheikhs, but they didn't turn up. <laughs> <laughs> alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, you had some, some there, alhamdulillah. Others couldn't make it, alhamdulillah. It's a two-hour drive as well, alhamdulillah. Uh, but some of that, so it was... Um, and he, 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 we had something, so I, I, and I told us they're married. He can let him take his wife. I don't have to have a, another big celebration where yeah. you bring the tribe, you bring this. I don't, I don't care about that stuff, you know. So the, this type of thing, uh, you know, actually this is one of the things we'll talk about a little bit later, if you remind me, that you're making marriage difficult. That's why some of the reasons people are not getting married is these customs they bring in has nothing to do uh, with the marriage itself, subhanAllah. So the issue we said of the, you know, the four things mentioned in the hadith plus the issue of the khuluq. And the other hadith when he said, have you seen her? Hmm. And he said, no, he said, look at her. And he told him in the hadith, he said, he said look, at it, look, at, look at your wife because it's, it's better to make it, the, the, the marriage last. And he said in the hadith, uh, ila ma ila nikahiya. Look at that which caused you to marry her. Mm. I mean, what is appealing to you? Mm. And I remember even me, me and you, we talked about this before. Some mm. things you might find appealing, I don't. Yeah. Or vice versa. People are different. And, you, and you, you'll see, wow. And I'll be like, no, that's not really my style, right? Mm. But that's important because... If I take someone, for example, that's wow for you, but for me, I don't really like her, how am I going to live with somebody like that for the mm. rest of my life? Mm. It, it, it's going to make things I mean, difficult. The Prophet mm. ﷺ, he mentioned, he said that the best woman is who? He said, If he looks at her, she makes him happy. Mm. And, and also, he's the, 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 the opposite. He said, إِلَيْهِ And if she looks mm. at him, mm. that she makes him happy. Mm. What does it make him happy? The outer appearance is going to be a big part of that. Yeah. But also the inner, inner part as well. If someone who has manners and mm. someone who, 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 who is, is a good wife and, and that he's a good husband, that also has an impact when you see him because you're happy when you see them. Yeah. And, but also the outer, look, the outer looks as well. Also, has, if somebody like... And if, if you're married to a sister where you kind of, you lower your gaze because you don't like the way she looks, or she's vice versa, she yeah. looks at you, she doesn't... That, that's she, not a marriage that's going to be healthy. You know, when the, when the, when the brother came, and he, he's a sheikh himself, he came, yeah. the sheikh, he's, a, he's the son of one of my sheikhs as well, and he came and asked to, to marry my daughter. Um, my daughter, and he, I was a bit strict on, on what I allowed her to wear. Mm. And he, I allowed her just, and she had regular hijab on, and she wears niqab normally. So she had regular hijab on, maybe back a bit, like mm. this. Yeah. Uh, no makeup on. This is one of the keys. Don't wear makeup. Even is it permissible or not? I believe it's not permissible for a sister with makeup. Because mm -hmm. she can come in as someone else and he says, MashaAllah, she looks beautiful. And then he wakes up next to the next morning and sees her. Oh, it is shocking, <laughs> you know. And th this could even lead to divorce, honestly. Because yeah, some yeah. sisters, they're totally different. Mm -hmm. So you have to come out in your natural state. Even when you send a picture, if, they, if that's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's the correct way to do about it. But in some situations, perhaps, yeah. that's what you have to do. If you have to, so a picture first. Do it without makeup. Yeah. You, I mean, it's, it's a form of, of ghish, a form of cheating. Mm. So it's actually not permissible for the sister to wear makeup during the, the thing. I remember it happened to me one time when I was looking to get married, and the sister, she came in as well, very tight clothes, you know, you know, hair out, full of makeup. She was a, a, amazing the way she looked. But I don't know if that's naturally how she looked yeah. or not, because once the makeup's gone, she could be a, a totally different person. Yeah. So you have to, she has to be natural. So yeah. I would advise, especially for the, the first sitting, that she's... Uh, maybe may wearing, as the scholar said, that what she would wear normally in her house. Yeah. So how is she going to wear, in most households, how is she going to wear normally in the house? It's going to be, for example, a longer dress but in front of her brothers, in front of her uncles, in front of her father. She's going to be wearing a longer dress. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, too tight, too baggy, but any, something, mm -hmm. it, any, and uh, she doesn't have to even uncover her hair in the first sitting because you can see the face yeah. and you can see that, okay, do I want to, take it to the next step or not. Because you can have another sitting asked to see more later. But yeah. that's going to show you that someone's more serious. Because you can imagine, especially if the sister's practicing, and she's coming uncovering her mm -hmm. hand, you say, I'm not interested. So now all you saw from her in the beginning was her face. If you're not yeah. interested, then yeah. alhamdulillah, then, 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 then it didn't go any further. Imagine you saw her hair. Imagine she's all, you know, you know yeah. with tight clothes and you're seeing her body parts. And then the brother says, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm not interested. So therefore, 
I don't think it should be too revealing in the beginning. If she, I mean, it is permissible to see her hair from the beginning. But I, I didn't let my daughter show her hair. And if he wanted to know what her hair was, I said, let your mother see it. He didn't ask to see it anyways, but I'm saying if he had asked, I said, let your mother, let mother see, see her hair, she could I, I, explain to you. Yeah. After they, they went to the next day, they decided they were going to get married. If he asked then, then I, I would have no problem yeah. with him seeing it. I would have allowed them. But in the beginning, I, I didn't allow it. Yeah. And that's how uh, you know I, I believe in the beginning it, it should it shouldn't be too much because if it doesn't work out you don't want the his sister to expose herself yeah. too much maybe it's stage two you know if they lost they made it to that stage and they decide then he, he wants to see the hair then no problem in Shalom Taala. Subhanallah, how how was it as a as a as a father you know you know I can't imagine Subhanallah my daughter. That was all after our, our first show by the way because I, did, I didn't have that yeah. experience when we, when we did the first show. Subhanallah, Subhanallah you know. Mm. I can't imagine, you know, when your daughter reaches the age of, yes, of getting married, it must be very difficult, Sheikh. I mean, mm. you know, I always think that, I like to think that I'm going to be like really hard and tough. Mm. And, but yeah. re realistically, like when it happens, how, how was it? I, I think it's pretty it's, natural. It was, mm. it was natural. It was easy going, humble, laid back. We knew the family. It was a good family. A family actually. It was interesting because they actually had played with one another when they were when they were babies. They were young in Medina as well. But he, her father, uh, his father, studied in Medina as well. I studied in Medina, so I mean, we knew each other very well. So, I mean, it, it was it was easy going, and um, you know, we, we kind of had you know let her know from the beginning we're not going to force her to get married, but we we encourage young marriage in our in our household. And even my other son, who you know, Abdurrahman, you yeah. met, who's married to Dr. Bilal's daughter. He got married when he was 18. Mashallah. So we, we're, we're from those who encourage the young marriage, you know, yeah. alhamdulillah, if they're ready. But yeah. I, as, I, as I told Dr. Bilal, I said, even though my son, he might have shortcomings here and there, I said, no, he's a, he's a rajal. He's a man who can take care of a household. So I, I, know, yeah. I know that, alhamdulillah. So I can, I can uh, rest assured that he's in charge of he's going to take care of his responsibility my, as a man. As my a dad always said, yeah. men breed men. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So, <laughs> I've seen you as confident yeah, in yeah. Him, yeah, Alhamdulillah. So, yeah, so alhamdulillah. From that aspect, yeah. you know, it, it, we always encourage from yeah. a young age. So, when she came to the age of marriage, mm. you know, it, it was something natural. Mm. And he, just to kind of, you know, mm. let, it, let it take its process. You know? Sheikh, so you said that the four things of, to look mm. for in a wife, you know, and the, the most important being the dean. But, you know, does your wife have to be, you know, what, what level should she be at? Because obviously, you know, not not every woman is going to be like a, you know, a Quran teacher or something like that. You know, so what's expected uh, from a wife, and and how important are the other two? You know, like the, the the wealth and the lineage. You know, because you know, is it is it haram to marry someone who's not particularly religious? You know, alhamdulillah, she she maybe she does all the basics of Islam, but maybe you're more attracted uh, physically, or maybe you want to marry because of lineage or because of her wealth. You know, what's the guidance on you? I think it's important you look back once again to the issue, I mean, before I answer that in, in, mm. in, in detail, the issue of the beauty mm. and the looks. You know, you saw several hadith we mentioned, the Prophet look at, look at her, mm. and he mm. look at what caused you to mar marry them. And the, and the four things mentioned, the jamal, the mm. beauty. So that's important from both sides. Mm. I remember my, any, my wife, she was telling me that you know, one brother had come to, any, to try to marry her before, and there was, she's, he's very religious. Mm. Very good brother, mashallah, he's very pious from a good family, he's, he's well off. She's like, how does he look? Mm. And they were like, you know, they just kind of like would kind of, she, I, she, I didn't really feel good because they kept like kind of dodging that question. Mm. So the brother came and he was really religious brother, you know, practicing, uh, good family, wealthy. Came in and the, the guy was huge, he was obese, you know. So my wife was like, you know, how can I be with a man like that? I, could, I can't look at him. I could never serve him. I could never be with a man like that. So she's like, it's not going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So that type of thing is important from both sides. And I want to focus on that important. Because a lot of times we focus on the, on the beauty of the woman for the man, but also the sister has to be attracted to the man as well. She has mm -hmm. to be, find him appealing because if, if she's going to be a housewife, she's going to be serving and be taking care of him. There has to be attraction from both sides. It can't just be mm -hmm. from one of the sides. And something very interesting that Imam Ahmed, and he's the Imam of Ahl-Sunnah, he... Uh, w w used to advise people something that people found a bit, bit strange because he's known for it and he, he's adhering to the sunnah, uh, rahimahullah. He told the people, before you ask about the deen, ask about the jamal, ask about the beauty first. How does, how does she look? How does he look? You know, know, know what the person looks like first. He said, because if they tell you, and then ask about their religion, because if they tell you in the beginning, nah, they don't really look that good, you're not going to go forward. But if they tell you, well, shallah, religious sister, how does she look? Well, yeah, he, you know, you can... Hmm. Look for the edge of brother, you know. <laughs> so, and he, he said, then you reject her. He says, like you're rejecting her religion. Mm. 
Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at the fiqh of the, mm. uh, of the Imam. He said, so ask about the beauty first. And she said, Alhamdulillah, she looks good, an attractive sister, you know, mm. above average, something I think you'd be interested in. Mm. And he knows what your criteria is, what, what it is you're looking for. And then say, okay, how is her religion? So, Alhamdulillah, she's, she's good in her religion. And then you go to, 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 to any, the next step after that. So yeah. that's something any, very interesting yes. what he, he mentioned, yeah. Rahim, a long time. Well, it shows that the subhanAllah, the scholars took it very seriously. Yeah, you know? I mean, that, that's a part of marriage, right? To be attracted to your spouse. Exactly. But yeah. interesting enough, even when it came to him, when his, his first wife, Um Saleh, when she had passed mm. away, and he came to get married again, they brought him two candidates. And one of them uh, was a, of a lighter complexion and, 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 uh, and more beautiful. The other one was of a darker complexion. And she had a problem with her eyes. She only had one eye. Right away, he didn't reject this one. He said, which one is better in her religion? Mm. And he said, the one, that the darker one with the problem with the eye. And he said, this is the one I want, subhanAllah. Mm. Because, so he, he took that aspect from him for himself, but he advised other people because yeah. he knows the impact of, of the looks, what it has as well. So he chose this one, but who did she become? She became the mother of Al-Imam Abdullah, the son of Al-Imam mm. Ahmed, mm. Ta'ala, subhanAllah. subhanAllah. Uh, the issue that you asked about, which is, and he, I think is very important, uh, that we focus on, and um, what if, you know, you, you want something else, mm. and how religious does she have to be? I think it's very important that if you're someone who's very religious, that the woman you're going to marry is also very religious, or she's inclined to being more religious, mm. meaning that she, and he wears proper hijab from the beginning, mm. and she, um, she, she she's praying, and she's, you know, do all, all, all the things that's followed, which is compulsory upon her. This, in this case, yes, we say this one, you can go with that. But if she, you're coming now, you're someone who's religious. You want a sister who's wearing niqab, and she's not wearing hijab altogether. She doesn't pray, and you're going to put, you want her to wear a, a, a niqab for you, you want her to do this. That, that, and, and the end, it's going to be more, more harm than good. More problems are going to come from that than, uh, than the good that can come from that. Yeah. So you have, you have to make sure that you have you know, common goals you're, you're on certain levels. I know a brother, who, you know, a practicing brother, uh, but a lot of times he, saw, he practiced later and his, his wife w wasn't praying, wasn't wearing hijab or any of, the, of that. So this is, uh, you know, something that causes problems and it's not going to work out in the end. Mm -hmm. So you, she needs to have a, a certain level. And, you, and anyone, the issue of the prayer, the issue of the hijab, that has to be, that's the, the, the mm -hmm. basic stuff. But if you're someone who's involved in Tao, you're passionate about Tao, you're practicing, you know, practicing like, like, like we are, mm -hmm. you can't just come with, it with, with someone, a, a regular sister and think, mm -hmm. oh, she's going to be okay. Because you need someone who's on the same page with you, has the same aspiration that someone who wants to serve the deen and serve the ummah and that's the one you're going to benefit from inshallah ta'ala mashallah so what so so now you've uh, what other guidance do you have anything else on the finding a spouse because i know last time there's four episodes on this but we're going to have to you know uh, cut that down a bit so what what's next here once you found the right spouse hey, the other thing we talked about if you remember is that you know the the first night of the marriage and that is you know we we, we said you know build your fortress and mm -hmm. something very interesting, when you look into the sunnah, in a, how in a, the, the focus on the first night of the marriage, it shows you what the marriage should be like for the future as well, which is mm -hmm. the issue of um, you know, the, the, the different sunnahs that you follow the night of the marriage. So what should you do the night you get married is before you interact with your wife, <laughs> is that you should uh, pray two rakats with her. Mm -hmm. And also from the sunnah is that you drink some milk. And from the sunnah as well as that you drink from the same spot that your wife drank from. Mm. This is, this is, a, this is a, a, a romantic stuff, alhamdulillah. But it, it is the things from the sunnah, mashallah. So the, but many people right away, you know, he's just like waiting for his wife to come out in the lingerie or something mm. like that. <laughs> and then, you know, think about praying two rakats later. But it's very interesting when you look at it, not just the issue of, of following the sunnah. You have that, you have the dua that you make. And when, when you first go to your wife. And then also when you have relations with your wife, there's also a dua that you make. All of this is showing us the importance of you know, establishing the sunnah in our lives as Muslims and, and the impact that that's going to have. Mm. And from all the aspects, when you look into the sunnah of our beloved Prophet wasallam, it's in all aspects of, of, of life. Mm. It's in from the time we wake up in the morning from this. So then when you start our marriage doing these things, that, that's a, re, a, a beautiful reminder to us of the importance of establishing the marriage on the sunnah, on the Quran and the sunnah of our beloved Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. SubhanAllah, I heard one, one sheikh mention that this... this um, you know, doing the two rakat, uh, you know, you know, is the first thing you do, right? Mm. And it kind of sets the stage for the whole marriage, you know, that the, mm. the husband is the imam, yes, so the right. wife's following, but she's also there to correct him when he messes up, you know. Yes, so right. that's, yeah, you know it's beautiful, right? Yeah, really you know, it kind of just, just, you know, it just sets the, the stage, right? Yeah, 
So, Sheikh, subhanAllah, um, now in terms of, you know, starting your family, you know, you, you, you found your spouse, mashallah, and, uh, you know, what next, Sheikh? After that, the issue of the issue of the treatment. It's important to know how to how to treat one another and the rights of each each of the spouses. It's important that each one of you understand that. And something very interesting I found uh, in Kuwait and I believe maybe in some other Gulf countries as well is that you actually before you get married now you have to take a course. Mm. And, and I believe you have to pass the course. I don't know if you have to attend it or you have to actually take an exam in it or not. Mm. But I mean, take an exam would make sense. So you're not just you know, sitting there on your phone as as the instructor is talking or whatever, or you have to read some material and then answer mm. the questions to know the, the rights of each other and to know how to deal with one another. That's one of the, the key things from the start that we start with that as well and understand and you know, establishing, you know, we said that the, the establishing the houses on the Quran and Sunnah, that's one aspect. But for the Quran and Sunnah, it teaches how do we deal with one another. So you look, for example, and you, you said the Imam, he's the leader, but also that you see that the issue of uh, you know, doing things together, the issue of, uh, of teamwork, each one knows his role. There's also a very important you know, an, a, a aspect of the household as well is that we know um, and a lot of times when you look at, for example, uh, we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu about, you know, the wife obeying the husband. If, if, if the wife obeys her husband, she prays her five prayers and, and, and this and, 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 and fast her month and all of this, that she what? That she will enter, that, that she will enter into the Jannah. So mm -hmm. they always focus about the issue of obeying uh, the wife, uh, the, or the wife obeying the husband. Mm -hmm. Also, the issue any if I were to order someone to prostrate to someone, who would it be? Mm. This hadith as well. So the brothers they like these hadith, mm. but also don't forget the, the other most hadith. Used hadith. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. As it's milah. But the, yeah. the other hadith as well. The Prophet said, "What did he say? He said, 'Khairukum khairukum li ahli wa na khairukum li ahli.' Mm. So the best of you are the best of you to the families, and I'm the best of you to my family. Mm. Also, Aisha radhiyallahu anha when she described the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, um, how was he in his household? She said he was like anyone else. He would, you know, milk his own sheep. He would sew his own clothes. What can if he khidmati ahli? Subhanallah. If you look at the, the statement of the of the hadith, he was in the service of his wife. Subhanallah. And then she said, if the adhan was made for the salat, he was like he didn't know us. And at this time, this is the haqq, the right of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Now, so I get up for the prayer. But he helped out around the house. Hmm. How many of us now? We know the the hadith about you know serving the husband. But how many of us now help out around the house? And I and I gave an example in some some of my courses in the past. And my own personal experience is that, you know, like I find sometimes I, I might, if I wake up in the morning, uh, maybe the dishes weren't done. I know that's not my wife's custom. It's not how she is. Mm. She always does the dishes before she sleeps. Mm. So I, today I'm in the morning. I'm, 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 I'm usually have, I mean, I'm active much in the morning. I'm, I'm pretty dead at night. I'm not a, I'm a morning person, mashallah. So I, I come in the kitchen. I notice that the dishes aren't done. That's something abnormal. Many brothers would be upset. Why didn't you do the dishes? Mm. Obviously, there's a reason. Maybe her, her, she was busy with the kids. Maybe she was tired. But the fact is, the dishes weren't done last night. So what could we do as husbands now? Uh, this, wash the dishes, Akhi. You're not doing it all the time. Why not? But look at the impact that it has. Oh no, she, she wakes up in the morning and she's like, oh my God, I didn't do the dishes last night. I have to go to the dishes. So she's coming, you know, a bit heavy on herself. She's coming in the morning. She finds that the dishes are done. It has a huge impact. When you, when you help our own house. Mm. You see her now, she's struggling with, 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 you know, she's got the baby screaming one hand, she's trying to vacuum with the other hand. You say, Khalas, let me hold the baby. Or you, you, mm. you take the vacuum and help out every now and then. You're going to find it's going to have a huge impact in the, yeah. on her, inshallah ta'ala. So that, that, it's the issue of, of knowing the rights of one another, know how to treat one another. And uh, after that, that we, we, you know, we mm. work together as a team because building the house, it's teamwork at the end. You, know, you, mm. can't, you, you, you can't do it any... Um, you know, mm. without the other, you need you need to you know mm. be hand in hand and, and work together if you if you're going to have a successful household, inshallah. Subhanallah, you know it's it's important, it's a good reminder, especially for me. <laughs> you know, I need that reminder because uh, you know sometimes, subhanallah, like you say, you you hear certain hadith, you you know emphasize mm. certain aspects, you know, and you forget that you know there's, there's another side to it. You have that have to have that balance, right? Subhanallah. Mm. Yeah, something else we know, if you remember, we mentioned in the past issue of the importance of, of, of knowledge in the household. That you, you, you have an, um, an agreement from the beginning where you, you, you have to spread the knowledge of the Qur'an of the Sunnah in the household and, and study things together. Alhamdulillah, nowadays, like these type of programs we're sitting here talking, people can just you know, open up their YouTube or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, podcast, and they can, he they can hear or they can watch and they can benefit. Mm -hmm. Allah has made it very easy. But also it's very challenging because 
you have a, a lot of rubbish which is going to come up on, online when you open up the YouTube as well. So which one are you going to choose? You're going to choose the yeah. one the better. Just like the television back in the day. Yeah. You know, you have you'd have Peace TV, yeah. Huda TV, and then you have you know 900 plus channels which are, are you know calling you to go to Jahannam. You know, so which one <laughs> which one are you going to choose? You know. So this is this, and he, this is and he, having that in the household mm. where you study with one another. You you read it. Yeah, it could be reading one one hadith from Riyadh Salihin a day, mm. just one hadith. Yeah. Could reading reading a. a uh, an, an eye or two eyes from the tafsir of Ibn Kathir or now tafsir of Sa'di or something like that a day. Just having that, 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 that culture where we constantly read with each other and, and, uh, and, and learn our religion. And mm -hmm. that's going to have an impact on ourselves and also have an impact on, um, on our children as well. And when it comes to the issue of the, of the, issue of the, the, you know, the, the conflicts that happen between husband and wife, mm -hmm. and there's no house that, that is free from conflicts or free mm -hmm. from problems. It happens to everyone. And no one has a, a, any, even now I can be sitting here advising, I can give a course about this. I have problems in my house like anyone else does. Mm. But the difference is, is how you deal with them and how you deal with one another. When you have the fear of Allah and you know the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know the accountability mm. that if I oppress my wife now, I might get away with it because I, I might be stronger than her. Huh? Mm. Or it could be the vice versa. Maybe your wife's stronger than you. She oppresses you. <laughs> you have some sisters, mashallah, mm. who are very strong. Mm. But if you oppress the other spouse, what's going to happen is that you're going to be held accountable for it, Yom Al-Qiyamah. Mm. So do I, do, do I want to come in front of Allah and not fulfilling my duties as a husband? Mm. I'm not fulfilling my duties as, as a wife. I'm harming my, uh, my husband. I'm oppressing my husband. I'm oppressing my wife. So this is the thing. I mean, what, what really holds us back from that is the issue of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa that we have in our hearts, the knowledge that we have of the Qur'an and of the Sunnah, this is really the, what, what has the, the impact on, on how we treat, especially how we resolve the problems and the conflicts that we have. Yeah. SubhanAllah, he says, uh, you know, even, even the household of the Prophet sallallahu and even in the household of the Sahaba, there were conflicts, right? You know, we can't, sometimes we imagine that, you know, it's going to be all right, this kind of fairy tale, kind of marriage yeah. but it's inevitable that there's going to be disagreements you know and how do we deal with that maybe we can look into some of the yes yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story that happened to me my wife she contacted me and she sent me this story about Omar an, and she was like really happy about this and she was like you know don't you know this story and it was the story that the man who came to complain about his wife who was you know like raising her voice with him and she, mm -hmm. you know, she, was, she was being harsh with her husband how she dealt with her husband so this one he was Amir al who who is the Khalifa so he comes to, the, to his house to ask for advice on how to deal with his wife and he hears inside that Omar's wife is raising her voice to Omar radiallahu mm. anhu. So when he came out, he found the man had left. Mm. When he came out, he found the man had left and he asked him, he said, um, you know, why did you leave? He, so he went after him and said, why, why did you leave? Where did you go? And he said, you know, I came to ask about advice for my wife but he saw, I saw your wife was raising her voice to you. Mm. So he said that when she got angry, so he said, why did you... Um, he said, why did you leave? He said, because I, I, my wife was doing the same thing. I saw your wife was doing this to you, so I left. And he said, subhanAllah, he said, you know, she's the one who takes care of my, my kids. Mm -hmm. She cleans my clothes. She cooks for me. So should not be patient at the time mm -hmm. she gets angry. So what if she found that she was like, you know, uh, she, <laughs> it's like she's happy about it. She said, why do you get upset if I raise my voice to you? And I said, you know, she said, did you know, uh, first of all, she asked me, did you know this story? I said, yeah, I know this story. She said, why didn't you tell me then? Why do you get so angry <laughs> if I raise, raise my voice? Like, this, this is the thing, alhamdulillah. But, you know, sisters are different, alhamdulillah. But so I said, I said, well, I'm not Umar, and you're not his wife. <laughs> but, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so that, and you can see it even in the house, like Umar al-Khattab, the piety mm -hmm. they had and this. But still, they, they had normal things like we have. Yeah. So you find that, you know, and, and at the end, I know it's just something at that time. Two minutes later, I know my wife is going to be okay, alhamdulillah. And, it, and back to what we were saying about the, having the taqwa, knowing that their duties, uh, the roles of one another. I remember that you know, the, the other day I had a bit of a dispute with my wife. She was a bit upset, you know. But then when it, come, when it came to the, 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 the service in the house, my food, my, having my clothes, iron everything ready, she was really good at it. So I was like, I was a bit surprised. I was like, you know, you're upset with me, but you're still doing it. She said, no, these are your rights upon me. She said, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to, you know, play around when it comes mm -hmm. to because this is your right for me to fulfill my duties as the wife in the house. But I'm not happy with you. Huh? <laughs> so she, she let me know from one aspect. I, and the, she did her, her duties and her things from the, from, the, from the other side as well. And that's, that's that balance. Yeah. Where did that come from? It comes from the deen. Mm -hmm. This is my, my, my right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or this is his right upon me, mm -hmm. for me to do these things as the homemaker, which is a beautiful mm -hmm. name, by the way. Mm -hmm. Issue of the housewife. And I, 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 we were in Ireland, mm -hmm. and we registered you know, for my, my son's birth. 
And they said, well, you know, what is, what is your wife doing? They have to put the occupation. So I said that she's a housewife. So the, the lady right now, she said, homemaker. And, right. I, and I said, that's brilliant. I said, that's I never, nice. I never, I never yeah. thought about that. See, we, we don't call them housewife, we call them homemaker. I said, that, I said, that's amazing. I said, really brilliant, you know, the homemaker. Because that's what the sisters are, really, in reality. Yeah. And that's, you know, they're, they're, they're devoting themselves to their houses, to their mm. children. Uh, and it's a very beautiful thing. This is an important thing because in, in Ireland, you know, they do have, you know, they, 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 they're quite religious, you know, more, more, so than the, more so than England, right? And this is a very important point of having, you know, the importance of the home and having a, you know, a good, strong family unit. This is kind of being lost in English culture right now, mm. you know, but I remember you saying that, you know, your time in Ireland, they still have a lot of these family values, you know, even all the schools in Ireland are, are like uh, segregated. Most right? of them are. There's still, there, are them. there are some now who are mixed, but the, I think mm. the majority are still segregated. Yeah. And, and that goes back to the issue mm. of the religion. And even if you, I don't, I don't think you visited me in, in Waterford, but there's a place we have in Waterford actually, and I, I take a lot of brothers, it's a beautiful place in Tremor. Uh, one of the most beautiful uh, places in Ireland, and there's a there's a swimming hole there. Mm. It's very interesting because you see a sign. So there's actually a woman's swimming hole and a men's swimming hole. You know, and they, mm. they kind of leave it as a tradition now. They, they're making it as a joke, mm. obviously, because all of them swim together now. But that's how it was back in the day. They'd be segregated, mm. so only women could swim in this place, and only men could swim on, on the other side. Subhanallah. So mm. that goes back to the issue of the religion. Actually, until mm. today, in the Irish Constitution, um, they have a thing where they say that the place of the woman is in the house. Mm. So it's in the, you can go back to the Constitution, the, the, and, he, and it, obviously this for the feminists and others, it drives them crazy. Uh, and, uh, but they said the place for the woman is in the house. And they said that the, the overall good for the society will not happen or cannot happen unless the woman is in her house taking care of her family. And, said, and then the next thing it says, because of this, the state will, if the woman cannot you know, um, take care of herself and provide for herself, that the state will take care of her. Mashallah. So she won't be forced to go out of the house and work to take care of her family. Subhanallah. Mashallah. Subhanallah. Amazing. Yeah. I and mean, this is Islamic principles, yeah, right? Same, 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 same teaching, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So, Sheikh, I think we've got time for this maybe one more, one more section, if you like, and then we can maybe you know, come back next time. So what, what, what would you go on to next, Sheikh? So the next thing and that I always like to talk about is the issue of, of having an agreement. Mm. And you make rules and regulations. What are the rules of the household? And this is an important. People think now like it's a joke, you know. But in mm. reality, all households... They're built on, you know, uh, all, all in, 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 in societies are built on rules. Mm. All companies are built on rules. But when it comes to our houses, we have no rules. Mm. And a lot of times that we, we, we disagree with, with our spouses, or even when it comes to raising our children, because we're not on the same page. Yeah. Because we don't have rules. But when we go like rule number three, rule number four, and then, so this is, for example, we have a rule where we, we don't dispute in front of the children. Even though a lot of times we might mess up on these rules, but a way to stop it is that, we have an agreement. She's like, no, no, I want to talk now. She said, we can't. These are, it's against the rules. Yeah, and this, this is what we've agreed upon. Huh? Mm. So we'll talk privately and we'll talk later. We'll talk when we're not angry. So mm. now if you're angry, it's not going to benefit us. To, if I'm angry, it's not going to benefit us to talk. Mm. Because we're not going to talk logically now. So you calm down, I calm down. We talk later privately. We don't talk about it now. So this is, any, the, 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 uh, for example, one of the rules that could be. And something very interesting when the story of Sharif al-Qadi when he got married, he said, the night of my marriage, he said, I, I, he said, I went to my wife. She's from a different tribe. He said, I went to my wife and I went to approach her and she said, stop. He's like, oh, what is this? You know, he said, because it, it was a different tribe. Maybe she, you know, what's, what's going on with this woman? She won't let me come near her. He said, before we, 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 we proceed, she said, I want to tell you about myself. Then I'm a woman from this tribe, as you know, an Arab tribe, and I have my customs, I have this. Let me know what you want from me. And let me know what you want from my family, from your in-laws. What are, what are the limits when it comes? I, I, have, I have strong family ties, but you might have limits that you don't like when it comes to my family. What, what, do you, what do you want from us? So he said, look, he said, I'm a man who's a qadi, I'm a judge. I don't, I don't, ha I, I don't have time for certain things. I, I like to be relaxed. I, like to, you know, I, I don't like the, the, the family to be there too much. Mm -hmm. She understood that. And he said, alhamdulillah, he said, after we I explained to her what it is that I wanted from her, and she understood what... what, what I want it from her. He said, we had the most beautiful night. And then Hamdi said, we're married for the next 20 years. He said, we never had any disputes except for one time. And he said, that one time we disputed, he said, I was in the wrong. And how profound is that? Why? Mm -hmm. Because from the beginning, each one had a clear picture of what the other one wanted. What were the expectations of the other ones? Mm -hmm. And then if we make that into rules, and I even say, wallahi, write it down. Mm -hmm. Write it down 
what are the rules and the regulations that you want. And I can give you an example. I actually have some things written down where we did it as an example what we tried to do in the, in the house. For example, we get like 15 different rules. Well, you could even write that. You could put it on a frame and put it on the wall yeah, if, if you want. Because even the kids later, they, they, they know these rules. So, for example, you know, all prayers on time. These are, these are the type of things, and sometimes you shake, well, I shouldn't have to write this down, but especially for the children, it's good. Because they see from the beginning, these are the rules of the household that I have to, all, all prayers must be on time. Respect all family members, uh, even, even the maid. Because some, some cultures, they have maids who sometimes they might look down upon them. Now, she has the same rights as Islam taught about her. We respect her, we teach her good. We have a driver in some cultures. Mm-hmm. And they, also, we treat them just like we treat anyone else. Giving salams, we're entering and leaving into the room. The issue of please and thank you. And that, you know, in some cultures, they don't have that. You know, you mm-hmm. see like in, in, like in the Arab world, for example, shukran and zakhla khair, that's there. But, you know, please, lo samit, mm-hmm. that's not really there a lot of the times. But when you translate that into our culture in, in the West, it's a, it's a yeah. catastrophe. If someone asked you for something and didn't say please, give me this. Yeah. Without saying please, like, it's, it's a big problem. Yeah. So people have, have, have to understand that, especially in our culture, that's a very, very uh, key thing. Listening to all members of the family, uh, no matter how young or old, if they have a problem, the issue of listening. Listening to the kids, and he, that, when it comes to raising our children, that's mm-hmm. very, very important. Listening to, the, to your spouse, and when they, when, they, when, they, when they want to talk. And this is actually from the Sunnah. People don't realize this. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, it came in the hadith that he would stay awake sometimes late at night listening to Aisha radiallahu anha. Understand that's the nature of, you know, of some sisters who, who like to talk about things and things like that. So it's there right upon us that we listen to them in that case. And sometimes I tell you what, it drives me crazy. I don't really have a lot of time and hurry, I want to do things. Mm. My wife likes to talk and likes to go into detail sometimes. So I, and she doesn't like me to have my phone with me. So you have to respect one another. These things, you know, mm. this is one of the key things to building a successful marriage is that we respect one another's things. I don't really agree because I can answer everything she says to me and I sent a, I sent a text to John at the same time. But for her, she doesn't you know, allow this. She hates hate, hate. So I have to put the phone down and then I have to text you once I, I finish you know, interacting with her. Um, other things, for example, no eating in the rooms. It doesn't have to all necessarily be mm. it's from the Quran or from the Sunnah, this rule. It's yeah. something that makes our, our, our lifestyle comfortable in, in this. I think, the things we want from yeah. our children and things like that. I think it's important, like you say, even though it is in the Quran and the Sunnah, many of these things, mm. right? But you, you're making a, you know, a statement by actually writing it down exactly. and setting it as a house rule. Exactly. You know, I remember this was my favorite part of your, your yeah, thing, yeah, actually, because sure. yeah, I yeah. thought this is really good, you know, exactly, having yeah. them clear rules yeah. that the kids Because, yeah, I mean, for example, I remember one time, and he, my, my, my eldest and he showed us that they were eating in the room. And for me, that was like a big no-no, you know. But, 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 but their mother was like, oh, it's no big deal, you know, if, mm. if, if, if they want to eat in the room. I was like, no, so we have to have this. This is the problem when you have that dis- disagreement. So we have to agree, no, the place for eating is on the table in a certain place because we don't want the, you know, the food and the stuff to spread throughout the house, for example. That's, that, for me, is something very important. Mm. The issue of family time, you know, very, very important. You know, the issue, mm. And I remember one of the mashaykh, I'm not going to mention his name because he's become a bit controversial, one of the guys who studied with us in Medina. Um, but he was telling us his story and he said that, you know, Asr time, like every day, that was like our family time. We have to sit, we read a Quran together and then we, you know, have some family time. And he said, I really, really, you know, despised it at that time because I wanted to be outside riding my bike and play with my friends and what have you. And I'd see like my friends outside, I could see them from the window. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I have this family time we have to have every day. But he said, I realized the barakah and the blessings of it later when I became older. And I became a father myself and I realized how beneficial that was. And you can, you can add many things to this, the issue of, you know, uh, as I have no, no phones, no iPads at the time of meal, and this is also family time. Um, knocking for permission is from the Sunnah, teaching the children from a young age that they have to knock before they enter in, 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 into the room and take permission. It becomes one of the rules. Um, if you take something, for example, put it back in, in its place. Have any, and th- th- that organization in the household is very important. People don't sometimes realize that. When you live in, 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 a, in a place where everything is, is misplaced, everything's thrown here, it actually affects your, your life in many, many aspects as well. Even when it comes to the smallest thing of having the shoes organized, mm. when, you, when you come into the house, you have a, a shoe rack or you have it organized, it has an impact on you and of how you think, of how you act, yeah. and, and you come into the house, everything is organized, everything is in its place, you don't have to look mm. around for stuff and it's, it's, it's a mess. So that, and it, having things clean and organized, mm. it's also something you know, very important, clean up after yourself, everyone's responsible for their own room, their own chores, things mm. like that you have written down as you know, the, the household rules. And that way it helps you and it, it live a, a peaceful, you know, mm. systematic life. At the same time, you avoid so many of the conflicts, alhamdulillah. Mm. Um, 
like happen from not having the, those rules and being on the same page. Mm. SubhanAllah, Sheikh, it's, uh, it's, it's nice, mashallah. I, I really benefited from this last time and I did implement, not all of them, um, because, uh, you know, I don't have children who, you know, are at that age. Um, but SubhanAllah, you know, there really, really is a benefit of getting, you know, some rules and regulations in the household. And, and uh, they have to go both ways, by the way. And they have to yeah. go, uh, there might be some rules. Like, for example, I gave you the example, mm -hmm. to be honest. Me, like I said, I, I can talk to you right now. And I can I can see I have a message here I can answer it and I can I feel it's no problem but many people find that disrespectful I know my yeah. wife she hates it yeah so because of that I respect I respect her, yeah. her her opinion for that yeah. at, at the time of meals yes I, I can understand this you know mm. we don't want it but even like with that 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 private time mm. you know, that, that family time between you and your wife if she doesn't like it you know mm. that, that it's not a big deal mm. I, I know other sisters don't have a big deal with that mm. but you have to respect mm. one of the things so just like you know and then there might be something she doesn't really like that you like mm. That you want to put in the rules, but you know what? She said because of this, so you you, you reach you reach an agreement, something that, that's suitable for both of you. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, subhanallah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. I well, think yeah. uh, we'll leave it there for now. So, Sheikh, give us some insights of what do we have to come. You know, keep the viewers on the edge of their seat, waiting, inshallah, for the next episode. No, the, this is the, the juicy stuff is coming. Huh? Alhamdulillah, sure. inshallah. No, we have some things about the issue of you know of uh, of love and, and romance and, and, the, and the importance of, of that type of aspect. Because it's not just. I mean, as Muslims, this is something that has such a huge impact mm. and, you know, on our lives is that people don't you know, realize that Islam is, is, a, is, is, is it truly is a complete way of life. We haven't left anything. And then should we remind me in the next episode, I'll tell you a story of one of my uh, MMA coaches in Ireland. And one of the things that really impacted him when we talked about Islam was the relationship between the spouses. And he was like, the church, you know, they have issues with this. Mm. But I said, alhamdulillah, Islam, we, focus, we look at it as being a form of ibadah. I talked about this last night in one of my lectures I gave in Arabic. And, that, and it's now we look at this as being ibadah. So this had it. He's like, wow, it's really Islam. amazing. What aspect about Islam? Yeah. So inshallah, that's one of the aspects. Inshallah, we'll talk about in the upcoming episode. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. look forward to it. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. So we'll see you next time for inshallah. another episode of the, you know, the family. You know how to raise a family, how to you know manage your family. And uh, just to remind everyone, uh, Sheikh's going to be delivering an online course. So we've got a link in the description where you can actually sign up, leave your email. So that when the course is available, you know, you can actually be informed. And, uh, you know, I really advise, uh, you know, uh, signing up because, you know, you get a lot of benefit for yourself and your family. So, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh. Wa yakum. So, we'll see you next time. Barakallah. Barakallah.